Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Shinetsky. As always, joining me for our weekly supplement recap and review is uh, Justin Hall of Supplement Snoop. And we don't really have a game plan going in. Usually we kind of line out a few topics, but Justin and I hopped on the call and he said he just got finished ranting. He's still fired up, so I have no idea what he's about to say. So, uh, Justin, the floor is yours for the next uh, however long you want to go off, man. Yeah, this might be like a special edition. I think uh, I'm nice and lubed up today already. So, you know, man, and I'm trying to get out in front of this because I get so many questions about from brands, um, people, and it's about DMHA, DMAA, stuff like that. So when it comes to DMHA, I'm just so tired of answering the same fucking question over and over again. And it's going to get so bad now. Okay, so Alpha Lion is basically the last willing to sort of push the limits a little bit. Their manufacturer is willing to push the limits on whether it was legitimate DMHA or not. Any reputable company like Core used it for a little while, you know, and they're done. Everybody's done. Mm -hmm. right? It's not illegal, but it's done. Okay, nobody's yeah. using it. So you're going to see a fuck ton of copycats. Same as what happened when DMA happened, right? And I'm not going to hold people's hands when it comes to whether this stuff is legitimate or not. What you're going to be doing, what you're going to be engaging in moving forward, the brands, the manufacturers, and the customers, is some gray area activity. That is on you. There is going to be so many people that are going to try to step into this because Alpha Line has been making a killing because they were the last ones using this DMHA pre-workout. Right. They're done now. So, of course, there's going to be people that are going to copy that label, right? And they're going to say, oh, this is good stuff, right? This is this is DMHA. And then people are going to be like, oh, oh you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? They're going to be, Justin, can I send you this for review? No. Go fuck yourself. You, if you're going to be participating in this behavior, I'm not interested. Like, I'm done. Like, if you want to send me your DMHA pre-workout, I'm going to tell you thank you, but no thank you. Save that shit for somebody else. There's plenty of reviewers out there that, that are fine with this stuff. I'm not. I am not interested in taking a scoop of your pre-workout to determine if the drugs that you're putting in there by breaking the law with, say, some DMA or not is fucking real or not. Like, are you kidding me? I saw those dark energy assholes make a comment, and they said, take it and find out. Take it, and then you let us know if it's real DMA or not. Like, they're like, fuck. If you've, if you've used DMAA in the past, take this and let us know what you think. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, so, you know what? That's, that's cool. Do, do your thing. Do your thing and do it way the fuck over there. Okay? Yeah. Don't come here because I'm not, I'm not, there's so many companies right now that are doing some cool things. Um, you know, we talk about Glaxon. Dude, I love what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. There's Morphogen and Like a Pro. All these companies we talk about all the time. Why the fuck are we talking about these these fucking assholes out there. Like, and if that's what you want to know about, man, go somewhere else. So it's like, just stop wasting my time. Stop wasting Ben's time. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. We don't know if that's real stuff or not. We don't know. Right. Nobody does. Right? So yeah. Well, and the dipshits that are still using this, they're not going to be third-party lab testing it. They're not going to send us the materials reports on these things at all to, whether, to prove that, oh, yeah, this actually is 2-amino-5 meth or 2-amino-6 hexane. You know, all the, they're not going to do that because they don't even know what the fuck they're putting in it themselves. They're telling their contract manufacturer, hey, get something from the overseas market in China that looks like DMHA or, you know, Aregerensis or, you know, Biophytum or whatever other names it's, it's being masqueraded as. They're, these companies aren't testing it. They're just getting whatever cheap ass raws they can that they think is going to simulate what DMHA or DMAA is, and they're going to throw it in there and say it. It's the next hardest hitting pre workout, and they're full of shit. You couldn't pay me to try those things. Yeah, I'm and I've out. used enough mm -hmm. DMHA. I was one of the first people to use DMHA when it came in the market back when Giant Sports was using it and Gold Sports Performance and all of that shit. When these guys actually first brought it to the market, I was lucky enough to try it in the very early stages. So I remember what it felt like and how different it actually felt from. DMAA and all of the other iterations that have come along in the past couple of years masquerading itself as DMHA. None of this stuff in the past, I want to say like two years, has even felt remotely what it felt like back in 2015, 2016 time. Not even close. Yeah, and I guess that's like my whole point. Do I think that DMAA and DMHA should be available? Yes. Yeah. 
Absolutely, I do. But it's it's not it's not going to be used by anybody that has any sort of reputation because they're not going to risk their reputation on stuff like this. Right. That's the crux of the issue here. So anyone that is doing that, there's going I'm you're never going to know. So I was just like, look, don't ask me because I don't know. You won't know. No one will know. Okay. Correct. You anytime you're going to be using a product like that, you're just guessing. And I can't help you make a better guess. And I'm not interested in it. So I just uh, had to put my thoughts out there, hopefully get in front of this a little bit. Um, there's plenty of people that are willing to talk about that stuff. I'm just not. It's such a waste of time. It's such. It takes away from the cool stuff that people are doing legitimately out there. And I just... I'm done, man. I'm done. Like, I, I want to help people, but also at the same time, uh, people just, um, they want something that I'm not interested in helping them find. Right. So the people that are interested in this stuff, you know, like I said, my platform's not for everyone. I tell people all the time, uh, I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe you should just move on, you know, kind of thing. So if people want to know about that stuff, just, just move on, move on. Agree, a hundred percent, man. It's and since you uh, you, you touched on a couple of things that, that I'm going to bounce off of immediately. Uh, so dark energy, I, I'm not sure what half wit is operating their social media, but they just blast out messages to everybody. So Robbie yeah, yeah. had a pollen. I heard about this. Yeah, <laughs> Robbie had a pollen. I'm sure he sent you the same messages too. They and obviously they're not doing their homework and understanding Fuck what idiots. people they're contacting. So you know, Robbie had a pollen. He's a brand owner who markets high energy, high performance products, hit some hard stem shit. He's not even using real DMHA anymore. And he was one of the guys that made some of the most aggressive pre-workouts in Assassin. Um, the new Assassin's coming out soon, by the way, and that's that's not going to have DMHA in it, but it's still going to be a, an ass kicker. I saw the formula. I'm pretty sure you saw it too. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, these people said, hey, how about you come tr- you test our pre-workout and, do, and let us know if you want to sell it. And Robbie, just, I, I, just, I saw that and I'm thinking, are you fucking retarded? I mean, yes. you're not even doing um, the meagerest amount of work or effort to see who you're sending this message to. There are other assholes out there that are going to willingly try this and throw it into their bodies and you know do some stupid review on it for YouTube. Go check those people out. If you're here for actual educational information, what supplements actually are designed to do, stick around and listen. But if you just want to go get some bullshit pre-workout and feel cracked out of your mind, there's other avenues to go. So go support those guys. That's fine. Um, yeah, so that's my two cents on bullshit pre workouts. Yeah, I heard about the Robbie skin blends. Yeah. I saw Robbie's message. I was like, oh my God, what idiots. Yeah. But I guess that's his thing. This is not a a moral soapbox, high horse kind of thing. This is a legitimately we don't know anymore kind right. of thing. So that is not me saying, like I said, if, if DMA was, was legal, and it would actually be good because then places like the high techs and stuff like that, although they. They still do their thing, but well, those yeah. places could could um, source it reliably, test yeah. it reliably, hopefully um, put it out there. People could use it responsibly, more responsibly, mm-hmm. say. Yeah. It's kind of like the SARMs thing and all this other stuff. It's like, yeah. if I don't know, then I can't help you, and so we can't talk about it. And that's just where I'm coming from. It's not like, a, hey, man, I would love to use – I don't know if I would use DMA anymore, to be honest with you. It, that stuff is um, – it was awesome for a while, yeah. but <laughs> I don't think yeah. I don't think I really want to use that stuff anymore. But you know, it's this kind of thing. If I, it, we spend too much time trying to go over these details that are unprovable, mm-hmm. and I just man, I ain't got time for that stuff anymore. So yeah. if people want to do that, you're on your own. I can't help you. You know. Yeah, and the the, the marketing slang that the the dark energy morons are using is this is a research product or a high energy research product. They're not even calling it a pre workout so it can fall out of the purview of dietary supplements. It's now a research product. So they're putting it in the same classification as SARMs, which are research chemicals and all the peptides that people are using to combat aging and enhance growth and all of those uh, all the other bullshit. So it's yeah, I I'm I do not trust whatever shit they're cooking up in their bathtub over there. No, but if you honestly like like I said their marketing is Hey Robert, just take a scoop, yeah. and you'll find out. Trust us. I'm like, what <laughs> kind of shit is that? Yeah. So anyway, 
that got me a little because you know like I said, man, this is going to be there is going to be so much of this coming up because of the DMHA thing because of Alpha Lion. Mm -hmm. Alpha Lion's done. Yeah. Okay. There might be some like kind of straggler brands like maybe there, there's still some you know like you could still get some DMA products for a while because they had been already been run. Right. Right. So they were sort of you know seeping their way around and things like yeah. that and that's not what I'm talking about here. There's definitely there's definitely some products out there right now that have DMHA in it. Mm -hmm. They're going to be there for a little while, but I'm saying like when you talk about new formulas, like new, you're going to see all these little shitty, um, it's going to be these manufacturers and they're going to slap some fully disclosed label yeah. on there. We got into that whole like proprietary, man, here we go again. Tim from Natural Body Inc. made a point. He goes, I would buy a proprietary blend formula from Nutribio 10 times out of 10 before I would buy a fully disclosed formula from one of these these idiots that with sharpies and stuff like that and i was like that's so yeah. true because you yep. just the fully disclosed thing so you're seeing a fully disclosed bunch of lies yeah <laughs> oh my god like what is happening right now in this industry man it's like yeah and that's the, the bad part is when i i got some packages today i got some packages this week from um, and we talked last week about some really cool companies, um, the Peak Performance people. Mm -hmm. There's some good guys from like Canada. The Nutrition Store guys sent me their new pre-workout today. Mm -hmm. um, Glaxon's doing some cool stuff. It's like, why are we talking about these assholes, man? It's like, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It just is what it is. So if people are, you know, don't agree with me, I don't care. Actually, I put that on my stories. I was like, this is not debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't respond to this story. Awesome, man. Okay. Well, since you brought up uh, Glaxon, I thought I thought I would do a little recap here. So I just finished working out literally 10 minutes before we hopped on this podcast. Um, and I, I was looking for something to drink to mix. I got some bulk creatine powder here. I so got I was some looking hybrid, for something. hybrid in here. Oh, the, the uh, keto nootropic, keto carb nootropic. I thought about cracking that open. I added this. This is Zeno or Zeno Q. There are Zen Q. I'm not sure what is, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a Q or a band aid on what, whatever that is right there. I don't know if you can see that. So I know when they read it out, I, it says Zeno, I think, yeah. but I thought it was a Q. Yeah. So I'm uh, gonna, I don't know. Well, let's go with Zeno. It, it's in it's uh, in line with the, the space theme. But yeah, this is their EAA formula. The flavor is called sour berries. I think it almost tastes a little bit like their uh, sedative sleep formula, like that purple drink or whatever the. Uh, <laughs> It tastes a little bit like that. Like I'm, I'm getting a little bit of the sour strawberry, but it's it's almost like that grapeish, sour grapeish flavor that the uh, the Sleep Tom formula has. I have the peach one of that. Okay. And you know what? Here's a this is good. a good product like to talk about. I like the flavor of it. So I mean, it's doing well. So this actually brings up a good topic about amino acids. Um, Tim Gritzman from Natural Body, he <laughs> mentioned the other day about how he uses collagen and stuff intra workout and a lot of people are like oh it's for your joint health or whatever he goes no what i'm trying to do is he's like we're so focused on the bcaas and the eaas right. he's like i want to shore up you know the glycines the the things that the the collagen is higher in amino acids and some other things he's like i right. just use that to sort of balance out and get a more complete sort of amino acid um, profile yeah he's like it's not he's a that's just why so one thing that's interesting about the um, this Glaxon product is because uh, I've, I've seen people sort of look at it and sort of scoff at it like, oh, they're just using a proprietary blend of shitty aminos that aren't useful. It's like, no, what they're doing is if you look at a whey protein tub, I had mentioned uh, in the past, I was like, you know, the only thing I can come up with with as far as EA dosages and stuff, I was like, yeah. I would try to replicate a protein maybe. I was like, that's just my hypothesis. Right. And if you look at their formula, it's it's. Um, I think there's like 20 different aminos that are in that uh, one. Let's see. So here, I'll, I'll do a quick rundown of everything. In, in a full 20. scoop, there is seven grams of their Myosec uh, blend of amino acids. So it's got leucine, glutamic acid, which is like glutamate, lysine, isoleucine, threonine, arginine, aspartic acid, alanine, valine, tyrosine, phenylalanine, serine, methionine, glutamine, glycine, proline, asparagine, histidine, tryptophan, and cysteine. So yeah, 20. Very good. There's also 2 grams of hydrolyzed bovine collagen types 1 and 3, 1 gram of taurine, uh, 90 milligrams of hyaluronic acid, and 
25 milligrams of estrogen. Yeah. So actually, it's a it's a pretty cool little formula, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, the flavor is good. Not, I like it. And it's, I, I would prefer it not to be, you know, a prob blend of amino acids, but I, I, I mean, I get it. Are you going to tell me that, you know, 10 milligrams of this, 90 milligrams of that? What, I mean, it's you're getting 7 grams of amino acids, so just assume it's 7 grams of protein is what you're getting. Right, and what the thing is with with them is then it starts to go back to – because right, I felt the same way. When I originally saw – I was like, well, that sucks because it's trademark, yeah. and it's a proprietary bond. So you're like, okay, now knowing what I know about Flaxen, using their products, talking to them – they do a an absurd like really honestly dude because you you you're kind of close to them. Um, I mean, yeah, I know Sam. And I mean, Joey you're and closer said, than me. Yeah, you're closer than me. Yeah. So I told Joey from there. I was like, dude, I just want to come hang out and be like an intern for a day because he's like, <laughs> we just we just sit around like testing stuff in our lab and yeah, I'm like that sounds like the best job ever. So they do a ton of testing and things like that and um. So it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, if I didn't know certain things about them, if they weren't as forthcoming with information and dialogue with us, I probably would have a slightly different opinion yeah. because in, in like sort of going on to, it was like their, I don't know if you um, saw, I did a, a video about flight. Yeah, I watched their, that uh, yesterday. Dude, I didn't even really know what to say. Like, I can't, the last like week has been so bizarre. Like, I... I'm like, this is really, I think, working. Would you say it's and more I, of a, a cumulative product? Like the, the benefits aren't as um, fast acting in the first couple of days. And, you know, it's, it's almost like a saturation based thing or a cumulative thing where you have to take it for so many days before you actually start to notice any kind of tangible benefits from it. Yeah, I'm definitely leaning that way because I noticed in the first few days some increased blood flow say in the recovery aspect, say at night, which I thought was cool because I'm like, okay, um, that was noticeable right away. And then, you know, so I used it for a few weeks and I was kind of like, okay, you know, yeah. I was like, I, I don't, I don't know whether I'm going to continue using this or not. And then, um, some other people I talked to had started using it before me and they were like, kind of like, well, you know, after a couple weeks. So then all of a sudden it was like a light switch, man. Yeah. All of a sudden, like the last few days I was like, it was really noticeable sort of the changes. I've been really, really consistent with my weight and things like that for years. Yeah. And throughout this whole process of using this, I said one of the one of the issues you run into with like these natural muscle builders or these regenerative kind of things, a yeah. lot of people will put them into a new they'll get really motivated to start a new gym routine and a new diet. Right. And then you put this muscle builder in here and yeah, you see changes, but you don't know the changes could be coming from the cumulative effects. Mm -hmm. So I told them, I was like, I, I'm not going to change anything. Not even, not my yeah. training, nothing. And, um, man, the last few days have been noticeable. I'm, I've noticed a difference in, not like I said, I haven't been putting on like a ton of size, but just the shape, tightness, things like that of muscles. Yeah. It's, I feel it more in the connective sort of, vibe it's so hard to sort of explain but you just feel it's i swear to god man you can like feel more muscle fibers as you're working out it's it almost like, like a recomp thing or something that might be going on yeah it's 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 very like exactly like what they say like sort of a regenerative connective kind of thing mm -hmm. and i'm telling you man i swear to god i would have put money on this product not doing this yeah. i i i was like i don't I was like, it's a really cool concept, but there's nothing about it that really makes sense. Yeah. What they do differently is they have the um, delayed release capsules, mm -hmm. so it can help you know sort of get through the system. But I'm telling you, man. So I have another bottle of it, and I'm going to keep using it. Sweet. And I'm going to see what happens. It's 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 really eye opening. And I, like I said, I'm done. I'm yeah. done doubting what they do. You know, I've been skeptical from them. Right. From the beginning, and they're a great bunch of guys, and yeah. I'm like, they know what they're doing, but I'm kind of like, man. And then they have another product they just sent me a sample of today. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. It's in the same categories you'll see, yeah. and I'm telling you, every ingredient in there is something that I'm like, I don't. And I'm done doubting them. I'm done. Yeah. They they have they have 
their credit rating is is perfect. Uh, moving up in the world. Yeah. So it's cool, man. And when I see companies doing that, that are actually doing innovation and stuff mm-hmm. like that, I guess that's what gets me when I'm like, my, why the fuck are we talking about these people and their coffee cat DMAJ bullshit? <laughs> Yeah, man, it's uh, I I like what they're doing over there. It's um, I reached out to Joey to see about the podcast. He said he was traveling for work, I think this week, and then you know sometime in the mid February time frame, I think we're gonna try to uh get him on the podcast. When we do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you on here and we'll have a uh, I'll do that. It's epic. A three way. <laughs> that guy is awesome. So it should be it should be a good time. I'm excited, and I know they're they're based in Houston, so <laughs> they're that's two hours from me. So I might just need to have like a, a work week trip or something. I'll just get a – since we only have one car here, so I'll leave one car here with Sandy. I'll get a rental car, just drive down and go hang out with them for a couple of days and see what uh, – maybe we can do some you know in-person filming and shit like that. Well, and, that's uh, what I was saying because you're closer to them um, yeah. than I am. Dude, if I were you, shit, I mean <laughs> – Yeah. I'd just be knocking on their door like, hey, can I hang out? <laughs> yeah, man. It should be good. And it's, uh, I, I need to try some of their uh, – the pre-workouts in flight. Um, along the peptides line, I've been using – I just started it uh, yesterday. The Genesis One uh, product from Innova Farm. Innova Farm. Yeah. So I had tried a bottle of that. I want to say a year ago, but I really didn't track things super closely. I just wanted to see, hey, if I, you know, do I notice anything? I noticed recovery was a little bit better. But now for uh, for the run of this bottle, I'm not changing anything. Diet will still be the same. Training is going to be the same. I finally locked into a, a training split. Because for the past month, it's just kind of been, you know, whatever I feel like doing that day. And, you know, rotating, still pushing, you know, each thing to the limit. But now I've finally got my rotation of how I want the exercises organized, which movements are on which days, where I'm kind of lining up upper body, lower body workouts, and some, you know, interval training stuff here and there. So I've, now I've got that locked. Um, I ran the first week of that last week. So this week has been, you know, I've already had the, that acclimatization week. So this, it'll be everything is kind of set from here on out. So I'm gonna, let's see how this uh, Genesis thing actually works. Yeah, because that was one of the products I, I want, I've always wanted to, because this is a really cool concept. Like the whole entire thing is, yeah. is, is really neat. You know, but going back to the BioGrow kind of days, right? The colostrum and all that stuff. It's it's yep. super cool concept. Um, Innova Farm has one. Myoblox has their Supra. Yeah. I've tried on the Innova Farm one. And... It's kind of one of those things, again, where I tell people, and it's kind of like the flight thing. I was like, this is going to be a commitment kind of thing, most likely. Yeah. That's what's blowing my mind about this flight thing is I'm like, okay, you know, I, I've used a couple. I think Ambrosia has a colostrum kind of product. Um, mm-hmm. Nova Farm has the, pep, the embryonic peptides and stuff like that. I found out Ambrosia has one because I remember Lobliner going off yeah, years ago and yeah, yeah. shitting all over Biogrow. I thought, that's kind of the, the, the pot call on the kettle black right there. It's a little hypocritical, it seems. But, hey, you know, he, he recognizes just, a smart marketing ploy when uh, he sees one. So Yeah, it's just the industry, man. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, so I, I just, you know, I've tinkered with it. This is not me. I, I'm always, when it comes to stuff like that, I realize that it's going to take some sort of guinea pig anecdotal Mm -hmm. Um, talking with other people and I think that was what was cool all my conversations with Glaxon people um, have been sort of the same thing where Mm -hmm. um, hopefully Michael from from there is okay with me like saying certain things about our conversation but he's sort of like look man we need we need good feedback because we can't get good feedback from people because they're not they don't have a good control environment right Right. this this like I said if, if you change all the stuff and you're all of a sudden your diet's like on point and you're more motivated at the gym and you're doing more well then of course you're going to see some results right right? um he's like we need to know if this product is legit he's like we do our own testing but then in internal testing but we need more so and then sometimes they're like um you know they've told me hey we don't like there's this big question why is their sleep formula so freaking ridiculously effective why is their pre-workout so ridiculous he's like sometimes we take all our knowledge and experience, we put it together, and even sometimes we go, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> we did not anticipate that. So yeah, I think they're just a – because I, we're getting this – we're getting a little bit lost. I think it's it's great that customers are more educated and, and we know to look for, say, certain dosages or certain mm-hmm. ingredients and stuff like that. But um, a lot of people are sort of looking at them and sort of writing them off. Right. Because they don't fit in that little box, mm-hmm. 
when in reality something like what they're doing is what we what we need sort of to keep we know that there's quality out there they're going to be quality but this is also giving us some differences while still not being like these gray area kind of things too so i think this they're the type of brand man i think they're exactly one of those types of brands that i think the industry needs and i just i think more and more of them every day um they're they're approaching you know morphogen then you know territory yeah. for me well they've got cool uh, marketing that i mean the, the label design i'm not somebody that gets overly giddy about label design or you know any of that i like the the angle cool. that they're kind of going with this like comic book space sci-fi-ish kind of thing which is kind of cool um so obviously they're based out of Houston, so there's obviously that that NASA tie right there, the space theme and everything. So that's kind of cool. Um, sure. And what I told Joey when I uh, texted him, I said, "Dude, I don't know what it is about sedative because I mean, you know, we've had good sleep formulas before. We know what the ingredients and the dosages to look for. But I said, dude, for whatever reason, sedative is sneaky good, and I I, I don't really understand why. But it so it any I can get six hours of sleep and I'll feel like I've slept nine hours. It's it's weird." Yeah, dude, I feel the same way. And that was kind of one of those products where I was like, man, I don't know. Like, people ask me, they're like, why is this so good? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And they were kind of like, well, we tinkered around with it. And next thing you know, you know, kind of nailed it. And I agree. Like, it's, um, you look at the panel and you're like, okay, okay, kind yeah. of see what they're doing. And it just, because, and actually, I used a, a really good sleep aid last night from, ASC. ASC Supplements makes mm -hmm. the El Jefe and Sicario. Yeah, Bomba, Sicario, which are awesome. Yes, and what's so cool about ASC, and we'll give a big shout-out to Jake. I, I love Jake from yeah. ASC Supplements. He's a good kid. And what's funny about them is they have this very underground, sort of hardcore, you know, Mexican cartel yep. um, stuff, but their formulas are, are super high quality and just awesome. Monster so doses. they sort of have this, right, they have this... Um, so they let me try their new sleep aid that's coming um, last night. Oh, man. But they, I don't want to say they're not, they, they take the approach of, it's a lot of ingredients that we've we've seen. They they put it together very well. Big dosages. Yep. And, uh, man, that thing put me down last night. <laughs> but then you look at, like, sedative, and it's, if you were to, it's just different. It's yep. different, man. And I think that, when you see people doing things a little bit differently in this industry, mm -hmm. and the and it's it's there, and they're I think they're a great group of people that are happy to interact with their. I mean, you see the videos Joey does; is they're they're amazing. Yeah, and uh, he puts I mean he puts some time and effort in that stuff, and yep. I'm going to root for companies like that. Yeah, yeah, you they're know. going out. Of, they're they're not just spamming you with. Look at our athlete holding this tub of pre workout. Are you ready to hit your workout today like XYZ Bodybuilder? I'm thinking, okay, let's put a little bit more effort into marketing and education. And that's a big thing. I talked with uh, Paul at Bullfrog Nutrition as a preview of next week's, next Tuesday's oh, man. interview. I didn't even get started on that freaking product. Yeah. That's, uh, so him and I were talking about that, and it's just let's, let's, get, let's gear this advertising and marketing to the consumers as more education, not just spamming them with sexy shots of athletes and product images and all this other bullshit. Just, you know, let's, the consumer... I don't. I want to. I want to believe in 2020 that consumers are not going to just keep falling for the same stupid shit they've been falling for in the industry for the past 50 years, where boobs, butts, and product, and that sells everything. And I'm just. I want more yeah. than that. Yeah. And biceps, boobs, butts, and biceps—the three Bs of supplement marketing. True, and one thing too. Um, and yes, I mean, it's like the uh, Galaxon did that cartoon about yeah. me. Hilarious. It's like, yes, I I am biased towards them, but there's a reason why I'm biased. Towards them. So, yeah. um, I hope to see them. And you know what's crazy too is, man, they have released a lot of products. And you know, sometimes you yeah. see companies that will trickle out releases. And mm -hmm. um, like I know some companies that have a lot in their queue, and they're just sort of, yeah, Glaxon really, and they have like more stuff coming. That's, yeah. So I think it's cool, man. I think they're they're good. There's a lot of experience over there. They're very transparent with what they're doing. Yeah. Um, they're delivering. And what can you possibly... They, they they subscribe to the Supplement Snoop Group. They mm -hmm. actively participate over there. They they use the group as a resource to help them. And they... I mean, so it's all yeah. good, man. 
Yeah, okay. they, they're okay. successfully pulling off what a lot of other brands don't. A lot of other brands will spam stack 3D with saying, oh, hey, we've got, we've done this flavor collaboration. We have this product coming out and you hear this stream of endless hype for six months and then a year, year and a half later, you're still waiting for the, the delivery of the goods. Blackstone right. is the complete antithesis of that where you didn't hear much from them, but then they flooded the market with a bunch of these products and it's just it kept a steady stream going. And the products are actually, they taste good, but they actually do work really well, or at least the responses I've had to the small sampling of uh, Glaxon's products, I've really liked them. Same thing for uh, ASC. Sicario is a mean pump formula, and as far as like a nootropic, I've got to be careful. Because if sometimes if I take a full scoop of that, I and I still, I guess, I had some lingering nootropics from like the previous day, it'll it'll make me go a little flat because I'm over-stimmed, and I just yeah. I need to like sit down and calm down, but... If I haven't taken any kind of nootropics for a good like 48 or 72 hours and then I just use that, I don't need any caffeine the entire day. You are wired from like the combination of <laughs> Cooperzine, Alpha GPC, Tyrosine, Lion's Mane. And then you've got this full pump spectrum, which is hitting all the nitric oxide pathways plus taurine and glycerol for the hydration side of pump, the water-based pumps. Um, yeah, man, and the flavoring is good. As much shit as they cram into their formulas, ASC stuff tastes really good too. Mm -hmm. And they both, I think ASC is a good one too, because they have, um, I think people get a little intimidated by their marketing, you know, like, oh my God, yeah. this, this might be unsafe. They're, it's a complete opposite. Their right. manufacturing process, their whole, um, their whole thing is very, Jake is a good, he's a good kid. He's, um, yeah. I can't say enough good things about him and their products. Absolutely yeah. Delivered. That's what's cool about the whole, the whole thing. And then I think, um. You touched on it real quick. The freaking Bullfrog Nutrition loaded AF. Yeah. I cannot stop using that yeah, product. Good. That product delivers pumps that it's 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 like almost in the, like the Glaxon vibe where yeah. I take the product and I'm looking at it. I'm going, okay, this is cool. Right? It's got citrulline. It's got some creatine, some betaine in there. Yeah. It's got some Baso six. Hey man, I love that. Yep. And I'm going. I can't figure it out. Like it, it's it just delivers such gnarly freaking pumps <laughs> that I'm going. You know, it, it's cool that we see these creative, um, insane pump formulas, and then when I use something like that, sometimes I'm just like, that product is amazing. Yep. I love. It. I cannot say enough good things, and that's cool because Paul, I, Paul's a great guy. Yes. So, um, I think we'll get a. Are, are you going there that Thursday? Yes. Yeah, I was talking to him uh, after we got off the thing. He said, hey, make sure you come by here. Um, you know, we'll hang out, we'll talk. And he said, I might be able to introduce you to uh, Jay Cutler and a few other people to get him on the podcast. I said, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Shit, you're going to get a four-time Mr. Olympia on our show? I I'm okay with that. And plus, Cutler's new line is so much better than that bullshit he had when he was with BPI all those years ago. His new line is, is much better. Yeah, I think so. We're driving in that day on Thursday. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can... The, the plan is to go there. Right. So um, that'll be cool to meet them. I haven't, because Paul was at the Natural Body Block Party. Yeah. But I didn't get a chance to meet him. So it'll be cool to, the wife and I will definitely try our best. Our plan is to stop by uh, Bullfrog that Thursday night, because that's the day we're driving in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, it uh, should be a good time. I think there's a lot of, like I said, there's just so many, there's so much cool stuff going on, man. I'm just so fucking tired talking about these pussy ass brands and they're fucking taking advantage of this this sort of section of the industry the consumer that that wants to and that's fine man mm -hmm. people is america you can do whatever the hell you want right. i don't care just i'm not going there with you man i'm not going so you're on your own yeah my days of exotic stems i mean aside from the uh n-phenethyl dimethylamine the, you know the really pungent potent alkaloid from Aria Durensis. Outside of that, I do. Know. I I like that, and I'll I'll use that. I'm fine with that. Um, but all of the other, like the DMAA, the DMHA, uh, I, even isopropyl norcinephrine. If I see that in a product, I'm just weary because I've, I've had that too many times, and it go wrong. That I'm not interested in using any products that have it in there. Yeah, and I guess that's my thing. Like I said, I I have nothing against using some of those exotic stems. Right. But if I don't know. Anything about where it's coming from anymore that I know? Yeah. Speaking of, I got to give a shout out. Speaking of isopropyl norcinephrine and areodrensis mm -hmm. and the N-phenethyl dimethyl. Yeah. 
so the guys at TNS. Yeah, I saw this come across the uh, the stack 3D wire. Although I didn't see the profile, so you're gonna have to tell the uh, so, give the profile. So I know where they manufactured this product too. A very, very, very reputable manufacturer. So they start off with citrulline malate, one to one, so six grams citrulline malate. Okay. Beta alanine, three point two grams. They have sort of a it'll. You'll like this. The more I go on, you'll start to like this more and more. Okay. So you got the base, citrulline malate, beta alanine there. Clyster pump at one gram. So caffeine and hydrous, 175. Caffeine, dimalate, 175. It's mm -hmm. not the Infinergy. It just says that's what it is. Yeah, that so, caffeine malate, yeah. 175, 175. Sweet. They use one gram of sea salt. It's a lot of salt. They, yeah, so instead of pink... So the pink salt, they're using sea salt. Yeah. 750 milligrams of lion's mane. Nice. 300 milligrams perea gerandus. Phenol dimethylamine. You never know. Like some of these, they're always like just a little bit different than the other ones. Yeah, because there's the, the N phenethyl dimethylamine citrate, and then there's the N N methyl diphenethylamine citrate. Right. right. So which one do, do, are you using? Does that one include urea gerandus extract and? The separate alkaloid, or is that it's saying it's contained within that? It's saying urea gerensis in parentheses. Okay. So gotcha. there's some. It's standardized yeah. for that, but we just don't know which, how much. You're right. Yeah. So then there's T cream at 150, dynamine at 150, and then isopropyl norcinephrine at 25 milligrams. So yeah, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Very intrigued. So I'm going to test that one out probably tomorrow. Excellent. So anyway, I want to give a shout out to those guys. I love those guys over there. They are, they're pretty, they're pretty awesome. They, they do a lot of good stuff. They don't have a website, but they, or they have a website, but they don't have an online store. They mm -hmm. do like they're a, they're a store in South Carolina. Um, they do some, some pretty good call outs, TNS takedowns, they call them and, uh, they do a lot for education. Two super nice guys, contributors to the Supplements New Group. And uh, I know they put a lot of work and effort into this product. And uh, it looks good, man. I'm excited for it. Sweet. What is the uh, flavor on it? It is margarita. Margarita flavor. Ooh, okay. So salty. Salt. Well, yeah, it's got a heavy hit of salt in it. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's got the salt in there. The, it's going to be limey flavor. It should be good. It's called Enjoy the Ride. <laughs> There's some good news. I love those guys. So yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of bias uh, stuff happening in this mm -hmm. podcast. We started off with the shit I hate, yeah, and then now we're into the shit I love and the love fest. I'd rather I'd rather talk about that any day. Well, that's good. Um, what was your pre workout of today for today's training session? So I use the um, nuclear pre and the nuclear pump from peak <clears throat> peak performance. Yeah, that. Uh, we talked about, I think, last week. Daniel, part of the Supplement Snoop Group, yep. good kid. He's from Canada. They they really made a name for themselves. Uh, I think this was like maybe mid mid year last year, maybe even a little bit earlier. But um, they came out with Nuclear Pump. Mm -hmm. It was just a loaded, you know, non caffeinated sort of performance product. And then they they tweaked it a little bit this time around and. Then they came out with their pre-workout, and I think they have like a, they have an amino creatine type product, but I think they're they're redoing that one too. So it was good though. It was good. It's uh, the pump product is super impressive. Um, the pre-workout not really kind of my style. It's got a lot of the caffeine theanine. Mm -hmm. If there's theanine theanine in a pre-workout, I need there to be a reason for it. Right. I don't. Right. We're going back to the whole that whole conversation about caffeine and jitters. I don't caffeine doesn't give me jitters, so I don't yeah. need theanine to calm it down. But there is a lot of people that benefit from there is something there to, with the with the caffeine theanine for sort of that cognitive um, focus for some people. So right. you know, it is what it is. So I like I like the me personally, I like the pump product very much. The pre a lot of people will really like it, even though it's not really my kind of 
I have my account yeah. pre workout, but I really it is well well dosed. It's um well put together. They had a certain goal. I think they definitely achieved it. Gotcha. We're winding back to uh, Glaxon for a second. You said that when we opened the podcast, you were sipping on their uh, hybrid, the mm-hmm. keto carbon nootropic, and I, we may have touched on it a couple of weeks ago. But what do you notice from that? How do you how do you like it? I haven't I've yet to try it, so I'm, I'm curious. What is your do you get that cognitive boost from the BHB salts, or is it just kind of a you're just looking to add some extra carbs to your day or something like that? How how are you using it? Yeah, and I think that that's um, part of their issue. Part of the issue when you come up with these products like this is then you have to explain to people because people look at it and they go, uh, yeah. I don't get it. So the way I've been using it is post workout. Um, I fast, you know, I work out fasted every day. I do have some intra carbs, but I use this post workout, and what I've noticed is it's good for you know having some carbs, say post workout, but then also it mitigates that um, you know sort of roller coaster that you're going through when, especially when you're fasted and you have an intense workout. You know, mentally it can be somewhat jarring sometimes. Yeah. And I know I mentioned I've I've tinkered around with like some adaptogens. Uh, things like that that are can be a little bit anti-inflammatory. I would kind of like to keep those away, you know, from directly post-workout. But I've noticed if I use this carbs, you know, because carbs post-workout can help with the cortisol and things like mm-hmm. that too. So yep. if I have that plus sort of a nootropic sort of vibe and there's creatine in there, which I always use post-workout anyway, yeah, it really just keeps me – the pre-workout gets you up, and then to avoid, I, I want to do better than not crash. That's always been my goal. Like, right. can we mitigate the crash? That's what everybody's. This is more like we're going to go up, we're going to get you, and then by utilizing this post-workout, I've noticed that I just maintain a nice, you know, nice balance because we're, you know, we're working after our workouts. We right. have to maintain. You, you're doing a podcast, you're doing an interview, you're doing, uh, you're writing an article. Yep. So to keep that sort of going is, is really helpful for what, um, you know, what we do, our schedule and stuff like that. So I really like it. Excellent. I need, I need to, uh, crack it open. I'm, I'm still figuring out which time of day I want to work out. Cause for a while, you know, the past, I would say three months it's been, I've been working in the morning for like a solid two or three hours. Then I'll come home, pop my pre-workout then, then go, then train. Uh, Lately, you know, for the past week or two, it's been kind of flip-flopped where I'm not really feeling super motivated to work first thing in the morning after dropping the girls off at their respective schools. Um, So I'll I'll come home and train immediately then, and then I'll get into the work group. So, you know, do I really, do I want to double up on caffeine and just hit myself with more? So maybe I'll start trying to use the the hybrid in that instance where after I eat Mm -hmm. lunch, then I'll I'll take that and then kind of get into the work group or something along those lines. So interesting. What's that pre-workouts have you been, have you been doing? Uh, let's see. Today I went back old school because I've, I've still got, I've got so, like you, you probably have the same problem I do. You have a lot of pre- tubs of pre-workout that are open and you're trying to, you know, weed them all out without having 48 of them open. So in my freezer right now, I have a tub of Hypermax from Performax Labs. That's what I use today. I stack that with Vasomax. Extreme or original? Uh, Hypermax. Well, there's only Hypermax now. They they don't they don't call it Extreme anymore. I don't think it's just called Hypermax. So it's whatever their most recent iteration is. It's the, a good uh, one. Yeah, it's the Rocket Pop flavor. So I don't go for the full two scoops, which would be 400 milligrams of caffeine. I do 12 grams out of the 16 grams or 13 out of 17, whatever it is. Whatever gets me at like 300 milligrams, I'm I'm set at is what I don't need the full 400. Usually, um, I've got that. Did I roll my eyes. I'm sorry. I think I rolled my eyes. Yeah, you probably did. Just two scoop it, man. Come on. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I could. I just why, why go for that when I don't actually need it? So, um, what kind of attitude is that as America? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. No, I think especially with what's in there, yeah. that happy energy can get weird. Yeah, you know, yeah, if yeah, you, yeah, it can. If you well, I try to only use that once, maybe twice a week. If so, just because if I take that, I notice that one too many days in a row, then I start to you don't get as much of that euphoric. Uh, sensation and that's just sure. something me personally I know talking with Aaron he said he's been able to use you know some iteration of one of his products that has the uh, the Aridurensis alkaloid in it and he doesn't notice really any super tolerance like as you would notice if you use DMHA three days back to back where by the second or third day it's gone with the urea alkaloids he said he doesn't really notice that much of a, a habituation or a tolerance build up to it 
Me, on the other hand, I, I tend to get it if I use it more than, I would say, three days a week. Plus, there, I've got all the other options. You know, um, I have a tub of White Rapids, which I use that on Monday, which that's a now... Control lab? Yeah, but that, that one's, you know, been gone for a year plus now, but I still have a, a tub or two of that. Uh, I've got Nova Pump Neuro from mm. Nova Farm. That's good, tastes delicious, and uh, I like the original Nova Pump, so having the, the Nootropic one now is great. Because uh, I did a few, a couple of afternoon workouts a couple of weeks ago um, with Sandy after school, and that was good. Instead of having to, you know, get jacked up on uh, a bunch of caffeine or something at four o'clock in the afternoon, I just did that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a tub of Hooligan Bare Knuckle open, which that one's about to get killed off. The Jungle Juice is is <laughs> just about done. Um, I've kept that so in the how, fridge. How uh, <laughs> your tub of that? Because we we got them like right around the same time. Yeah. Um, I went to get a scoop of it the other day. I, I could have eaten it. I could have just. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, That's all I do. I'll, I'll, I'll just. I don't even use the scooper. I just stick my fingers in the tub and then throw it into the shaker. And then, I mean, the second awesome. it hits water, it dissolves, and so there's no issues. But just you know, getting that like wet sand texture out of there. Um, what else? I um, I've got a tub of steel pump from Steel Fit open. Hmm. I don't use that one as much just because it's got a high dose of theanine in there and some KSM. So. I'll use that if I get like a wild hair to try it every now and once and again. Um, but the performance aspects on it are really good. I like it. Um, what else do I have open? Uh, I've got a tub of Primeval Labs Ape Shit open, the regular Ape Shit, not the, the Thermo Fat Burner Powder. Um, I haven't used that one in a couple of weeks, but I, I like that when it first came out. That, was, that one always hit really well with me, and I think still to this day that's my favorite across the board from the Primeval pre-workout lineup. The original Mega Pre Black formula left me feeling very flat. Uh, Mega Pre Red, I, I still didn't get noticed too much of a kick from it. Um, I've got a sealed tub of their new one, the new revamped Mega Pre Black that they released at the end of 2019. I haven't tried that yet, but because like I said, I've got the and other six. Of, I've already have a lot of those. Yeah. Um, what else? I've got Vandal. I've got Moody's Vandal. Um, I think that's it for the ones I have. Oh, and uh, Anova Farms and Durling, which is their thermo powder. Um, I've got two different versions of that. One from a year and a half ago uh, that had that listed the uh, the DMHA alkaloid, the methyl hexane, or uh, mm. uh, the one five, whatever they called it, um, and then the newer one, which has the biophytum root in it. So yeah, they always had some interesting ones. I know some of them they were like proprietary blended, so yeah. But they had a lot of ingredients in those things. Yes, they do. That was like, um, so I had a, I got a bunch of stuff this past week. I can't even remember what I got. But um, have you tried the Astro Flea protein? I'm not even familiar with the company. Uh, yeah, I started some shit yesterday. Uh -oh. not on, not on purpose. Uh-oh. Astro Flea? Yeah, so they have a pre-workout that came out a while ago. It's called Moonshot. And I saw the label, and I was like, damn, that looks familiar. So they, I think I had mentioned it, and they were like, well, hey, well, we'd like to send you some and some of our proteins. And I heard some really good things about the proteins. Yeah. And uh, so they did. And I'm looking at the, at the pre-workout, Moonshot. Yeah. This really cool formula because it's, it's DMHA and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed, I was like, man, this freaking thing looks familiar. I mean, like really familiar. The original Relentless Labs activate because one of my Relentless Labs uses a extremely high quality manufacturer. Mm -hmm. They no longer use DMHA because the manufacturer is like, we're not going to risk it. So right. it ties into our whole conversation earlier. Uh, so they had to reformulate. And I'm looking at it is Moonshot is line for line, milligram for milligram, the same. And I was like, you know, it is what it is. That's that's the industry we're in. There's no intellectual property. Right. It is what it is. So I was just like, oof, it's the same thing. Like, literally the same thing. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, I mentioned that on my stories yesterday. It wasn't like a criticism or anything. It was just like, hey, if you if you liked Activate, yeah. probably like this. But they're, they're actually reformulating it. Um, probably a good idea, right? Right. But anyway, their protein is outstanding. I had yeah. uh, cookies and cream yesterday. Oh, man. The Isomix or the Mayo mix? This was the Mayo one. That I got the peanut butter and jelly Isomix. I'm going to try that today, actually, okay. right after our podcast. So, 
that uh, cookies and cream one was pretty legit. Interesting. Why don't okay this this is something that does irritate me. Uh, the supplement facts for the uh, pre workout are not on the well, site. Yeah. So uh, I, all the I, other I labels that, are there. But. I found out through the there was a little bit of a shitstorm yesterday that I apparently dusted up and <laughs> the uh, you know I won't go into it but. Yeah. Um, they are reformulating it. They so that I believe that product right there is no longer. But if you if you need to know the formula, you just go to uh, look for original Relentless Labs activated. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so it was really good. Okay, well, good good stuff, man. Uh, I'm gonna go dive into uh, Stack 3D now mm. and see what we can get. So. I texted you about this last week. So the first entry up is Muscle Addiction, which they this was hyped on Stacked. I think this got muscle released addiction. 15 or 20 minutes after we ended our podcast recording last week. And I sent this to you, and I thought, hmm, this kind of looks a lot like BPI Sports' old uh, Pump HD. Oh, they have label. another one on here. Yeah. Well, this is the idea. The formula is actually released now. Before, they were just adding advertising, that, hey, Muscle Addiction is coming out. Um, so, but this... It, the label looks very similar to BPI's old Pump HD label, so maybe they both use the same designer or something like that. I mean, obviously the colors are a little bit different, but the 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 text and the, the layout of the panels and all that looks very similar. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I do like the profile of this a lot, though. This so Muscle Addiction's Pump Addict is supposed to be it's described as an ultra hardcore. Uh, pre-workout that's basically hitting on everything. Uh, so I'll do a quick rundown of the profile. It's 40-20 servings. Uh, so in a full serving, so if, you, if you're going, you're double scooping this, you get 20 servings per container, you get 6 grams of citrulline, 3 grams of betaine, 1 gram of agmatine, 300 milligrams of vaso-6. So you're happy about that right there. Uh, this is this, an expensive formula. This is a very expensive formula. Uh, for the Stim Addict blend, we've got 300 milligrams of caffeine anhydrous, 300 milligrams of N-phenethyl dimethylamine, which is the, the really the ass kicker from Aurea Gerensis, 200 milligrams of theobromine, 175 milligrams of methylibarine, which that's the, ye oh, it says as dynamine 40%. So I'm guessing it's 40% of the 175 is what you'll get. Um, 100 milligrams of theocrine, that's the yield on that. Uh, 25 milligrams of Conaese, which I love that ingredient, especially in high stem formulas. Uh, 3 milligrams of Rawalcine, which is alpha eohimbine, which that's that's an aggressive dose. Uh, and 50 milligrams of Astrogen. So, yikes. I'd like to try this one. It's, uh, I said, you know, when the, it's hard, especially lately, I know I'm on this kick of, you know, when I see companies that I don't know anything about them, and they have formulas like this. Yeah. And this is this is especially when I see them basically rip off BPI's look. I, I feel bad because I don't I don't want to make judgments about these people. They they could be doing they could have a great manufacturer. I would like to know more before I sort of weigh in here because I already see some red flags. I'm just a red flag kind of guy anyway. Yeah. I'm very skeptical when it comes to where this stuff is coming from, so I would I would like to learn more because the formula is awesome. Right, I'd, I'd be all over this. This is a little bit of the, um, I would say, there's some rain, you know, the Olympus Labs mm -hmm. sort of, but the Conies and the Vaso Six and this and that. But then there's also Dynamine and Tea Cream. I yeah. love the PDA source in there. Uh, Three hundred milligrams. Mm -hmm. Well, this, after, this, after we get off this call, this I can tell you. Who uh, who's backing this brand? I, I can't say it on air, but I, I verified this when I first saw the label. Um, so I'll I'll talk to you about that as we get off of this, and I'll just leave all the listeners waiting in anticipation. Um, but if you it's click on their website, ready. it's not up on their website yet. It comes in two flavors: blue Raz lemonade and candy explosion. Uh, if you go to their website, it's not listed on the website yet, but they've got some. Uh, mm -hmm. sketchy stuff on there. Ep Epi Andro 300. So, and they're using Aromastain, which now we know that there's only a very, very small handful of companies 
there's high tech uses aromastain, and then there's another manufacturer that is using aromastain, and sometimes I don't understand how they're also another one that still uses DMHA. Right. So I'm guessing I know where they are making this. Yeah. Um, yeah. That this doesn't help with how I was feeling, but I don't want to. Maybe. Do they really call this a DCA stack? Yeah, it's aridurensis caffeine and uh, aframoma <laughs> meliguetta, so the uh, paradoxine <laughs> thing, grains of paradise. So that's that's clever, but uh, very clever. Yes, ephedrine, yeah. caffeine, aspirin, old school shit. Yeah, I using epiandrosterone. I I I don't know, man. That's that's one of those gray area ingredients that I'm not. Uh, I don't think epiandrosterone is like a really good idea. Either. Yeah. yeah, it's got that alongside 225 milligrams of KSM and 50 milligrams of paradoxine. I mean, it's it's an interesting think, formula. I'm just I've never been on the bandwagon with pro hormones and all that other stuff. So, yeah, people, I think that. I've never taken pro hormones, but I know enough people that do, and I know enough people that know about them to know that it's not as simple, especially if you want to keep your your gains and all that stuff. There's yeah. more of a protocol. I I see some companies, even like big companies, that sort of I don't think do a very good job. They will, you know, they'll have an androsterone and epi androsterone sort of together, and then they'll, you know, you're forgetting about some other things. So pro hormone talk is, I just think a lot of people are set up to fail with the way companies market their pro hormones because right. the companies themselves don't understand. Um, Blackstone labs is a good example of that. Right. They, I've talked to their, I've talked to their representatives. Uh, oh my gosh. Talk about people that don't understand pro hormones and how they work. But yeah. They're the ones selling it. It's a, it's, kind of like that and so i think that there is a way just me personally i think that there is a way that you can if you know where this is coming from i would want to know if you're manufacturing with pro hormones i would want to know is it from high tech you know stuff like that they seem to have some pretty good technology there right um, but if you there is a i would say a safe-ish way to take this stuff and i would just do my research you know stuff like that yeah. before i would dive into but when people just say Oh, it's a increased natural testosterone. I'm gonna buy that. You don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Correct. It can be. It's not like you're. You know, it's gonna like these things shouldn't be liver toxic and all that other stuff, but it still go, could lead to very unpleasant experiences yes. if you're not say, taking certain drugs. Agreed. Agreed on all accounts, my friend. So, so uh, yeah, oh. if, if they're going to go along the lines of the, the stem pre-workouts, maybe hopefully they phase out the uh, the sketchy stuff. I, I would be interested to see what muscle addiction has based on this pro, uh, pre-workout profile. Pre but the, the, the other stuff leaves me a little uh, concerned. I mean, if that's a legit pre-workout, I love it. Yeah. Um, I did. Mm, what was I going to tell you? There, uh, I saw an advertisement on here for the Pharma Freak. You know, Pharma Freak's been around for forever. Right. And they have some new formulas coming out. Did I tell you they sent me uh, their CBD product? Yeah, we touched on it last week. Have you used it at all? Uh, yeah, I used it. Uh, I've used CBD products before. It's So when I talk about not understanding them <laughs> and what they're supposed to be doing, it's because I've used them and literally might as well have been uh, some, I don't know, some rice flour pills because <laughs> I'm like, I don't I don't get it. Like, there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing going on here. Is it all placebo? You know, kind of right. thing, and, which is a real thing. But uh, so I, I started using it. I, I don't know, man. But at the same time, I'm just not a, I'm not a high anxiety kind of guy. I, I don't really think that the anti-inflammatory properties are all that great. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really know what to make of the product like this, but I am willing to try. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to get what the appeal is. Yeah. I just don't, especially for the price that this stuff comes with. So right. I'm trying another one, and I think if somebody was going to do CBD, you know, right, it's probably going to be a Canadian brand. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, their testosterone booster actually is is um, you know, I, I want to, I want to say it's more 
and they actually say it on their label. It's like a vitamin mineral sort of testosterone support system rather than, oh, we're going to, you know, jack up your testosterone. Yeah. It's a, ni- it's a nicely dosed uh, product, though. So I, I like what they're doing. So mm-hmm. I figured I'd give it a pearl and sort of see what's going on. Gotcha. Scrolling through here. Uh, Steel Fit's got a caffeine free fat burner for its female clients. For women? Yeah, what is this? Everything's pink. It is. It must be for women. It has a lot of pink. That's cool. I, you know, I, I like them over there. I think, you know, here, and it is that we talked about this several times. There are certain companies that consumers, as educated as they are, they still only will, even me, like you only think to a certain point. Right. Right. There's definitely companies that sort of take advantage. They, they make the pay tax, you know, we talk about stuff like that. Steel is not one of those companies to me. Um, so if you, this, this product I'm sure is not, there's nothing, there's nothing like, there's not women's say weight loss and men's weight loss, you know, really. Um, but I get it. This is, um, it's something I want to say a necessary evil because you can't, you can't really like just run around and every single day go, here's our weight loss product. Now I have to explain to you why women and men don't have different needs. Right. And right. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Let's just put some pink, a pink label, give them some good ingredients. They'll get it. Yeah. So it's sort of like that, that give and take. Right. You know, like, and I think uh, if you look at the profile on this, it's got a lot of thermogenic ingredients in it. So the, the profile real quick, it's got 150 micrograms of iodine for thyroid support. Uh, 200 micrograms of chromium picolinate, which is going to be for blood sugar and insulin function. 500 of L-tyrosine, 200 milligrams of cactoline, which is a dragon fruit extract. 200 milligrams of dandelion, which is going to promote um, diuresis, which help you know help flush out some water weight. And it's also got some potassium in it, which kind of counteracts some of the negative side effects of other like prescription-based uh, diuretics that deplete a lot of the minerals in there. Uh, 200 milligrams of green tea, 115 of organic kelp. That's where you're getting the, the iodine from. 100 milligrams of teacrine, which that's kind of cool. Uh, mm-hmm. 50 milligrams of grains of paradise, 50 milligrams of resveratrol, 40 of ginger root, which is another thermo ingredient, 30 milligrams of afron, which is a patented saffron extract, and 3 milligrams of capc astro, which is a, a it's in the same family as capsaicin, so it's another thermogenic uh, ingredient that's going to activate the TRPV1 receptors in the body. Um, so, well, what I was going to say real quick before you jump on that, the reason I think they're marketing this towards women, the pink bottle is that women by and large enjoy the thermo component of pre-workouts and fat burners. I think they're more inclined to go for that because they like the cardio workouts. They like the, the Metcons and all of those kind of things. Whereas guys just want to get after the, the prototypical guy wants to get in the gym and throw some weight around. He doesn't want to get this huge heaping high intensity cardio Metcon circuit going on sweat fest. Yeah, I agree, and I think um, someone asked me about like what what kind of ingredients do I like to see in say a stem free fat burner, right? Because we're like, yeah. okay, if fat burners don't burn fat, if even even the paradoxines of the world, there might, you know, does it tinker with fuel substrates? Does it mobilize fatty acids? All this other stuff, but you still ultimately right. have to do the work, right? Yeah. But if you can use it. Say you have something, you've got some tyrosine, you got um, the tea cream, you've got some of these stuff that will just, and then if you have some sweat kind of things going on, ultimately what that's going to do, especially when there's mood things, I think mm-hmm. indirectly leads to fat loss because A, you'll be, you'll probably have a better workout, but also a lot of people that are struggling with, with food, it's because their brain is telling them, oh, I'm hungry, Yeah. you know, go eat. Now, when your brain is more preoccupied with other things, maybe maybe doing this keeps you busier at work or other stuff. You, you're not as prone to sit there and go, okay, I'm bored. Let me go eat some food. Right. So I made that point about maybe like outside the box, some choline or something like that could be good like in a – Stim free fat burner as opposed to just the normal actors. Um, you know, they, they have some acetyl carnitine and stuff like that because right. 
you're just keeping your brain occupied mm -hmm. and you're probably less likely to, you know, when you just kind of sit there and go, well, I guess I'm just going to eat something kind of thing. Right. You know, next thing you know, that adds up. So it keeps you busier, uh, stuff like that. So I think that's sort of the best direction. And like I said, then you have the considerations for, you know, fuel substrates, maybe when you are doing the work, it's giving you a little bit of a boost. So I think that's where we have to go kind of with the stim-free fat burner kind of thing. And then blood sugar. So like right. That helps. And I mean, a couple of these ingredients have been shown to, at least in the short term, you know, because most of these supplement studies are anywhere between four and 12 weeks. Most of them aren't super long-lasting. And they'll show a very modest, mild elevation in resting energy expenditure or in, you know, total energy expenditure to the tune of like, 50 to 100 calories per day. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that is nothing because the average person's, you know, burning somewhere around 2,000 calories a day. But if you're already in a diet, every little bit helps. So caffeine, you know, a 200 milligram dose of caffeine will, I think it boosts up energy expenditure about 80 calories per day. Green tea is in that same ballpark. Uh, Grains of Paradise or the, the Paradox in the patented version is, is does something similar. So all of these things can have a cumulative effect, but it's still going to be a very small fraction. So that's why, like you said, what you earlier said, if you're not already doing the work, this thing is not going to make you lose weight. But if you already have that calorie deficit and your, your diet and training are in line and you're, you're set up, you have your base foundation set up to lose fat, I think this can potentiate the results of you get. So instead of losing, you know, five pounds over the course of a month, you might lose six or six and a half pounds, something very small. But it, it's, a signif it's a meaningful difference for somebody that's trying to lose weight. It'll give you an extra pound or two, I think, in the, in the grand scheme of things. In the immediate, it's not going to have a, a you know, very noticeable impact. But over time, I think it will lead to it. Yeah, and, and one thing, I, uh, when it comes to when you're dieting and stuff, ultimately it's, it's the mental struggle. Right. Do you still enjoy your workouts? Do you still enjoy being in a caloric deficit? Because it gets pretty tough, you know, especially yeah. people that are going for big swings. So by making you feel, say, if you have the GBBs and stuff like that, you know, you're, you're sort of feeling it when you go to the gym. You're more likely to enjoy your workout. You're more likely to get up that day. Um, the placebo effect, all that stuff with um, how you're feeling, it's sort of like, keeping you going through the dips and ebbs and flows of dieting and working out. It's like mm -hmm. anyone can say work out. Like I, I see people all the time. They're like, yeah, my goal this week is to work out seven times a week. Yeah. Okay. But are you think long term? Are you going to be able to work out 300 times this year? Right. Not seven times this week. That's great. Yeah. Are you going to be able to stick to this? caloric deficit for three months not mm -hmm. not it's some i mean people go day to day and yeah. we're like oh well um you know today i just i did so good i tracked my macros i i kept but then two days later you're pissed off you don't want to do it anymore and you just fall off the wagon right so it's like these kind of products are used to keep you sort of going through those tougher short periods and like you said if you can just tinker with it a little bit Mm -hmm. So why people are like, well, do you think these products are worth it? They are if you use them correctly because ultimately at the end of the day, when you're, when you're happy with your progress, you know, and you might need yeah. a little bit of help, and what's that worth to you, you know, kind of thing. But if you use it in the wrong context, you know, you're, you're shit out of luck. Correct, yeah. It's a self-propagating cycle where you see the results, then you're motivated to keep going, and it keeps pushing you more. Whereas if you go into it with the wrong mindset or the wrong approach – you know, you could be turned off of fat burners. And I, I think by and large, most fat burners on the market are garbage because either they're they're poorly formulated or people just don't use them or understand the application. I don't think they're all entirely useless, but I think the main purpose of fat burners is either to deal with the low energy that you're going to see while dieting, the low motivation. So increasing your, you know, your productivity and your desire to work out and help also crush appetite. Those three things will, I think will have the bigger significant impact than all the stuff that might marginally raise energy expenditure or help convert some of the white fat to brown fat like paradoxine would. I think the, the ability to suppress hunger, improve energy levels and motivation is going to have a more meaningful effect in the long term from a fat burner standpoint than any of the other supporting agents that you see in most fat burners. Yeah, and I think it just goes back to the, the overarching you know, concept with supplements in general 
so much of what supplementation comes from is designed to help the, you know, the 1% or, you know, a certain group of people that are doing things a certain way. It is adopted by the 99% that don't necessarily, it's not really designed to help you, right? It's, Correct. it's supplemental to your, and I'll give you an example. Like, uh, I said, I was having another conversation with someone about flight and he's really consistent. We have very similar backgrounds, training styles, adherence to diets and, and routines. And I said, you know, you're a really good candidate, I think for this product yeah. because that's, what's been really helping me too is anytime, you know, you, you're working out for so long in these sort of things. Sometimes everything stagnates, right? You yeah. can just, you know, sometimes you're just like, man, this sucks. Like I've, I, I say to my wife, like joking around all the time. I'm like, you know what? I'm done going to the gym. I'm never going again. I'm done. And she's like, well, until tomorrow, right? So you wake <laughs> up. But you know, when you use something like, so when people go, is flight worth it? Yeah. For me, how I've been feeling about going to the gym for the last week yeah. is it is, it has helped me so much over these last few days, just sort of get over a little bit of a hump and things like that. So for me, it's worth it for someone else. I don't know. I don't know what your mental state is with going to the gym. I don't know if it's going to put you over the edge to get you more motivated to enjoy the process. It's all about like supplements just come come back to like, are you going to, is this going to keep you enjoying the process long term? Correct. Oftentimes. And if you do adhere to it, we're going to help you a little bit. I said, we're just going to hopefully keep you within the line. So I think that's why a lot of people just really get into supplements. It's sort of, uh, there are benefits to supplements, but it just is a way to keep you going, man, because this is just a long term, never ending thing. And it's like, you, you better figure out a way to enjoy it. You know yeah. what I mean? And get some, hopefully, you know, you have the GDA type stuff and the fat burners, the pre-workouts. Like, that's why I don't use like fat burners and stuff because mm -hmm. I want to be able to use a pre-workout. Right. Um, and still, like you were talking about Aaron earlier, being able to use your Rejurensis constantly. Mm -hmm. I've gotten myself to a point where I can use pre-workout as long as I don't go over a certain limit. Mm -hmm. I can use a pre-workout most every day of the week and still get that good feeling. So I'm really, yeah. I really like that. And mm -hmm. I don't want to, once you start pushing it, next thing you know, I'm like, well, shit, yeah. you, know, you can habituate so easily. So that's what it's all about, man. Just, you know, how can you best adhere to this long-term process? And mm -hmm. that's where the supplements come in. Yeah. It's without the diet training and sleep in place, supplements don't do the whole hunk of shit. I mean, they're, they're worthless. They really are. And this is somebody that is an advocate of supplements and somebody that right. helps you know identify which ones are actually out there but if you don't have all the basics in line it, it does supplements can do fuck all of nothing um that's just that's the way it is um along the lines of the the tolerance build up of pre-workouts i know you usually follow push pull leg split or you know push legs pull how whatever variation of you know push pull legs that you follow um do you train over the weekends oh yeah yeah i would say I train up until the point where I just really don't want to go. Yeah. Um, and that's what I like about the push pull legs. It's kind of like one of the things we've been, I was having this conversation with Jeff Long, you know, he's pro bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know, talk about changing up your routine. He's like, I've been doing the same routine for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a lot of that changing up your routine is keeping, again, like keeping yourself mentally in the game. Like, progressively, you know, like I said, making progress, progressive overload, whatever it is your goal. Right. What I like about the push pull legs is it leaves me, sometimes I just go to the gym and I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes like, say if I do, if I start with pull day, I like to start with pull and then maybe I go push. If I'm not having, say, a good push day, sometimes I can go to maybe a pull body part that I didn't hit you know, maybe as, as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of versatility in it because people get overly, they overcomplicate your rest periods and, and things like that. It's like, man, you know, sometimes if you just, just get through it, man, just do what you can do, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing, because you're not all workouts are going to be winners. 
you know, but yeah. you need to be able to find a way to sort of get through that. So I like that routine um, just because I can have a plan, but then at the same time, if I need to change up that plan mid workout, mm -hmm. you know, I still can. So that's what I like about it. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, if you, if, if you took any rest days, I was going to say, did you, do you, you take a pre-workout on your rest days? Cause usually I'm training straight Monday through Friday and then Saturday and Sunday it's takeoff. Cause I'll do a little bit of work and I'm hanging around with Sandy and, and the, the toddler and whatnot. And so I don't usually work out over the weekends unless we're at a park and you know, the, the halflings running around and Sandy and I'll get like a body weight push and pull workout where we're alternating dips and inverted rows, pull-ups, uh, decline push-ups, all that kind of stuff. Um, but on those, on the weekends, I don't take any pre-workout. I might have a cup of coffee when we go to breakfast and, or, you know, I'm, we're usually up at seven, seven thirty, and we're not eating breakfast till nine thirty or 10 o'clock because we've got uh, other things to do right off in the morning. Um, so I've got that, that step back from, you know, the regular nootropic powders and the, the pre-workouts and all of that other stuff. Um, so I was trying to see with you, if you ever, since you're training straight through it, you, and you said, as long as you stay below that threshold of caffeine. And I guess other exotic stim intake, you can kind of take it each day. Yeah, and then when I do take a day off, it's for a reason. So now I don't, I don't have, um, I don't use stimulants. Maybe a cup of coffee or something like that. Mm -hmm. I try to always do something every day, though, unless I really, unless I'm in like a really aggressive powerlifting, you know, where your body is just like wrong too. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can't do this. So that's why. Uh, I don't do a lot of supplementation on my days off, just the normal mm -hmm. nerve routine. But I, a lot of those days off are also to just give my body a break from, yeah, you know, stimulants, just supplements in general. Right. So it's usually just sort of a all around recovery sort of process. Yeah. Do you do any kind of interval training, cardio stuff with your work, or is it mostly lifting? And you might get in the the, the walk with the dog in the afternoon as your your cardio kind of stuff. So I do, I mean, I've done lots of that stuff. Um, what I really like doing, um, I would say for the past about six months is I just do the stairs and mm -hmm. that thing kicks my ass so bad. Yeah. I don't need to do interval training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, yeah, climbing I mean, stairs endlessly is a bitch. Yeah. So I can do that and just get a great workout. I feel good. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what it's all about. Usually I just, um, just very in tune with, with how I'm feeling. Because, you know, we, we we work a lot. You know, you right. and I, we, our days are, are pretty wild. And I I use the workouts as a way to help with the rest of my day, mm -hmm. not, you know, hurt it. So right. there's, a, there's a certain point that I don't, if it becomes, de you know, detracting from how I'm feeling for, say, our meetings, you know, later on, am I mentally just, I don't want to do, I can't do that. So yeah. there's always a balancing act there which i like about having a versatile you know i tell people about the routines and the diets like put more tools in your toolbox mm -hmm. that way you can always adjust you never have an excuse to be like oh well i can't do can't do my routine or my diet's gonna be out of whack it's like i don't ever want to feel like that so right so i encourage people just man, keep trying different stuff so you can use it because you know life's gonna throw some curveballs and you can't use that as an excuse yeah great well dude i think that would uh this has been one of our better podcasts that we've had over the past couple of weeks since we started. This was a this was a really fun one and a overly positive and lots of good nuggets in there. So I think we're just gonna we're gonna call it a day with it with uh with that. Sounds good, man. I uh, I agree. Just uh, got started off on a little rant and then we'll talk about the good stuff, man. Yeah. And I, I want to turn that page on the some of the bullshit in the industry and just talk about some cool stuff. I think the whole health and fitness and the journey and supplements, man, should be positive. And it's Agreed. good to call out people for doing bullshit, but at the same time, let's not give them too much credit. Agreed. Awesome, man. Well, thank you, as always, for your time, and uh, have a great rest of the day. All right, my man. We will talk soon. All right.